Hello, how's your day going? Welcome, everybody. Hello, urban sketchers from around the world. As always, it is so good to see everyone. I can see that there was a little bit of confusion, especially in North America, because the time change and all that. Some of you actually tuned in at an hour early to try and see whether the show was on. I am so impressed with your dedication. Thank you so much for being so cool. And I hope you enjoyed the extra hour. You had to cut sort of chill out and enjoy maybe breakfast or something like that before tuning in again. Hey, everybody, if you just tuned in, I'm Rob coming in live from Hong Kong. It is just after 11 p.m. And we have another great show for you. If you've seen the promos, you know what's coming up. And I am personally really, really looking forward to this as well. Lots of cool stuff that Mari is going to share with us. But first, first, we have a really cool sponsor coming in that we'll be talking to. Before we jump into all that, though, I wanted to wish all the women out there happy International Women's Day. I'm, I know I'm a few days late, but in the U.S., I know you're celebrating Women's History Month. And that ties in really well with the subject of our topic today, Victorian Women's Sketchers. So I, I'd like to start, as usual, the show with asking all of you, do you have a favorite female artist? And if you do, please put that in the comments because I would like to know. I think that, that history has had too many stuffy old men writing the books and a lot of women have been neglected, but that is going to change. And our segment today is going to be a little bit pushing towards that. So let me know which female artists are your favorite. I want to know. I see so many favorite. My favorite female artists are in the thread already. Hey, Virginia, how are you coming from LA? We have got ooh, Marta from the Algarve. <laughs> Alvin is saying too many to mention. Yes, there's so many awesome women sketches coming in from everywhere. But Historical artists as well. I'm always interested to know. Maria Len from Dublin. Hello. Lynn coming from California. Wow, so many of you. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all and welcome if you just joined in. Okay, I'm going to now introduce to you our first guest. Our segment sponsor is Derwent coming in all the way from the UK. Let's invite Charlotte Watson. Hey, Charlotte. Hi. How are Hi. you? I'm very well. Thank you. How are you doing, Rob? Excellent. Thank you so Ooh. much, first, for sponsoring this segment. And thank you for making time to be on the show. Pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you for having us. Well, we're always happy to. I mean, Derwent is a name that I, I think every sketcher knows. I mean, I remember <laughs> when I was a kid, I had a favorite set that someone gave to me, and it was so precious. I would carry it in my bag and take it everywhere with me. In fact, I, it was so precious, I was like, afraid to use it up because uh, back in the day as a kid, it was it was fancy. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> I, I, love, I love your product. So... And, and I know that Derwent also has a really, really rich heritage. I mean, it goes back a really long time. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you're completely right. And it's so lovely to hear that you've also used our products, like growing up and everything. That We love to hear that. Um, but, yeah, we do have a really, really rich heritage, actually. So we actually um, trace our roots all the way back to 1832. Um, and that's where, when a lady called Anne, Bam, uh, Anne Banks opened the first um, graphite um, factory in the Lake District. So that's the world's first graphite factory. And that's when we manufactured the world's first graphite pencil as well. So that was all the way back in 1832. Um, fast forward a few years, um, we actually managed to open our um, purpose-built manufacturing plant in 2008, so our second um, manufacturing plant in 2008, and that was actually opened by the Queen as well, so it's been a really, really, yeah, <laughs> so, which is quite amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't work for Derwent back then, I mean, that would have been quite amazing, wouldn't it? That would have been a nice little, you know, um, but yeah, so a really rich heritage that we're really proud of, and you know, it's lovely to hear that you use the products growing up, and that's certainly something that we, we're definitely seeing with our artists, is that they've kind of used it for generations before them, and you know, so it's, it's really lovely to hear. Yeah, absolutely, and what, did you say that the um, manufacturing plant was originally in Keswick? 
Yeah, Keswick. So that's in the Lake Keswick. District in England. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's spelt Keswick. So okay. all right, <laughs> Keswick. Yeah, so, I learned something yeah. today. Yeah. Is it still there? Is the plant still there? Um, yeah. So the, so we've um, we've actually developed since then in two thousand and eight a new per, um, a new manufacturing plant. So we moved from Keswick to a place called Lily Hall, which is also in the Lake District. So you know oh. our roots are very firmly in the Lake District in England, which is oh. a really lovely story actually, because obviously we are a British. British band, brand, so it is really nice. That is so cool. And also <laughs> when I read that you have a plant there, I just realized that very close in my neighborhood, there's actually a street called Keswick Street. Oh, <laughs> so, how funny. What, <laughs> what, a, what a connection. But what Amazing. I really wanted to ask you also mm. is, I mean, a, a brand that is as rich in heritage as Derwent, mm. How mm -hmm. do you decide, how do you decide with such a huge range of product, how do yeah. you decide how to innovate? How do you, you know, decide what to do next? Yeah, of course. So even though we do have a rich heritage, you know, we're very, very conscious that we don't become bound by it and we're always looking forward. And, you know, very much like artists, we're, we're very much on a journey of discovery ourselves, always asking, you know, what if and what next. Mm -hmm. um, our renowned um, research... Yeah. No, I love that. What if and what next? I mean, yeah. that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go. Yeah. On. Um, yeah, so I was just going to say that our renowned um, research and development team are constantly innovating, you know, looking at new formulations, new pigments, um, and just constantly reinventing the wheel, really. And what's really lovely as well is that the, the company is also made up of a lot of um, artists as well. So, you know, not only have we got the kind of technical knowledge, but we do really understand that artist and that creative journey, which is really great. Um, but yeah, just constantly looking forward. Oh, that's that's awesome. So you you can have a lot of collaborations with artists then as you come up with new products. Absolutely, yeah. So we do have a really kind of thriving artist ambassador um, community actually, which is really great. So we work with artists of different styles that, you know, within different art trends so like urban sketching calligraphy life drawing which is really really lovely and what's great is that not only can we support them on their sort of creative journey but of course they they support support us hugely you know when we're when we're looking at in, innovating new products we always kind of reach out to them we do kind of workshops focus groups to ensure that anything that we create is the right thing for the artist and definitely one of the products that we've wanted to speak to you to you all about today um, we work very closely with the artist that you're about to bring on as well to kind of at the beginning talk to him about you know the formulations about the colors and actually it was some feedback from him that made us change the color palette slightly as well so it was really lovely to have to have his and other artists feedback as well that sounds really exciting mm -hmm. and i suppose that's about time for us to cross the pond and invite invite mm -hmm. onto the show jed Diador, all the way from brooklyn hi jed Hi, everybody. Uh, Hi. Good morning from Hi. Brooklyn. Yes, from Brooklyn. Oh, and before we jump to that, I also want to share the screen so that everybody knows that. No, I just wanted to share your um, Instagram handles and all that as well so that people can check you out. So that is today. And this is Charlotte mm -hmm. um, with the official Derwent Instagram account. So if you've got questions, mm -hmm. If you have questions, people, put them in the comments because we've got someone very knowledgeable, Juliet, who's going to be answering your questions from on behalf of Derwent. And then this is Jed. So for those of you who'd like to check out Jed's work, uh, isn't that a cool Instagram handle, uh, handle Jedi Door? Mm -hmm. Jedi Door. Okay. <laughs> Jedi, Jed, let's talk. Okay. So you are on the Artist Ambassador program, program and you've helped to develop this particular product with, with uh, Derwent. What, what is that journey like? It's, uh, I, it's just incredible, Rob. It's, it's a, you would imagine that you know, I, Charlotte and Judith and, and the Derwent team contacted me, uh, gosh, it's been almost a year, I think it was, last year, mm. um, and just been really working with them quite thoroughly on this new set. Uh, so I'm really proud to be a Derwin ambassador because Derwin is is actually an art supply uh, that I used I've used since grade school. I used it in high school. I used it in college. Um, so 
you know, we've, uh, you know, I told Charlotte and the team that I really wanted to do something honest and, and really be, you know, honest in my critique about about the uh, the medium. So, you know, I'm coming at it from an urban sketcher point of view as a repertoire artist. So, we really did a lot of work to develop it, and it just came out so great. That sounds really exciting. I mean, you're speaking to the heart of what we do, urban sketching, and you mm -hmm. are you're on yourself. So we love the fact that you are representing what we do and you're talking to to uh, brands like Derwent to develop something that's very that's dedicated to the community. Like this particular piece that we just showed as well on the screen. This is Times Square, correct? Yeah, I, I'm really excited to share this uh, because it's it, it is Times Square, and you know I. I chose this illustration in this location because I wanted to to really test out the product. I, you know, I was telling Charlotte at the time, you know, I, I thought of Times Square right away because I knew that it would capture the versatility and the mm -hmm. color and the vibrancy of the set. So, and it's kind of funny because it was at first challenging because the weather was really bad for like two weeks or something. We were getting a lot of really bad weather. And finally the skies opened up and it gave me an opportunity to go there and really go at it. And, uh, and I, this is the illustration I made with the set. Awesome. I mean, it looks so cool. Speaking of the set, let's take a look at that. And if you just join us, welcome to USK Talks. We're gonna be watching a demo that Jed is gonna talk through as well afterwards. So we'll see how this particular set works. But right now, I think everyone's interested to see what the actual set is. So tell us what it is that you love about this set, Jed. Uh, what I really like about the set is it's that it's per absolutely perfect for urban sketching. I think it's tailor made for uh, what we do. And you know, one of the things that uh, I was telling Charlotte early on as we were developing it was, you know, I was I was so happy about this. I was I was telling her, you know what? These are the colors that I normally mix. Mm -hmm. Have to mix on the spot. So I'm like, usually fumbling around mixing these colors and I have to bring extra colors. So what I really like about it is fact that it's just an absolute perfect palette, I think, uh, mm -hmm. for urban sketching, especially in the city. Um, and, you know, with the colors as, as well as three different, uh, essentially three different sets, three different types of sets that, that they brought in and, and amalgamation of the three. And so there's a perfect balance of, of uh, pastels and graphite tint and, and intense colors that are in the set that are just, you know, it's a perfect combination, I think. And then you have the uh, the two pens that are just you know the line mark the line maker pens that are a perfect uh, accompaniment with the watercolor or the pigment set. That sounds perfect, and I'm really excited also to show the our viewers that particular demo you did so that they can actually see the mm -hmm. process of how you took it out onto the streets. Let's show, let's run the video. <laughs> Tell us, this is Jackson Heights, correct? Yeah, so here we're on our way to Queens. Queens is one of the five boroughs in New York City. It's uh, energetic, colorful, and culturally vibrant and dynamic. So that's why I chose it. Uh, and so there I'm like ordering some chicken empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, important to get some snacks before you, you do a bunch of uh, urban sketching and reportage drawing. Um, so, um, you can pretty much that this location, Jackson Heights in Jackson Heights and Queens, is one of my favorite locations in, in all of New York. Uh, as I described to my friends, you can pretty much taste the world in that one in that or two blocks there. Um, I've heard of, I've heard about it. Okay, tell us about this. What the materials that you're using now? This is this is the line and wash set. And yeah, the so there's I'm using the ink tents uh, paper, which is the watercolor paper. There you see it. That's the larger watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And then I'm using the line and uh, the line and wash set, uh, and I chose to draw that intersection there, the elevated platform that you see, uh, and that area. I love drawing in that area because it's very vibrant and energetic, and you know, uh, pretty dynamic. So whenever I draw a location, I, I usually case in the drawing there first with the with the uh, with the pens, mm -hmm. and then I start to uh, you know. Uh, choose the colors that I want. I'm really just going on feel, what the place feels like more than anything, because I want the, the the viewer to experience what it felt like to be there. So I'm really just kind of reflecting the energy of the place. And there you we, can see totally, We totally hear you. We're urban sketches. We totally understand mm -hmm. that. And there's the finish right there. That's the finish of the intersection oh. with, all the, with all the sort of craziness going on. And that's everything I use, the brush set pens, uh, and then the two line maker pens, and then the uh, 
line and wash set. There it is. That is so compact. Mm -hmm. That's so compact. And then, of course, my favorite thing to do besides trying is, oh. is uh, and, um, and have snacks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, happy a great video. <laughs> that's, that's a great video. Thank you for thank you for sharing that with us and for our audience. This is what the final sketch looked like. Okay, so tell us, Jed. Uh, um, you were saying that there are different things, the components in the actual set itself. It's not just paint. So can you go into that into in a little bit more detail? Like I think some people are also asking, what is ink tents and mm -hmm. and the, the graphite tint and and that sort of thing. Yeah, so the, the paint set is made, uh, this line and wash uh, set is made up of three different sets, uh, ink tents, uh, colors, uh, which are, you know, can be applied uh, layer on top of layer without drying. It's pretty opaque. And then mm -hmm. uh, pastel colors, uh, which is the, from their pastel paint sets, which has a kind of gouache uh, characteristic. Uh, and then if, uh, two graphite tint uh, colors, uh, which have uh, really good uh, granulating colors. Uh, so the whole set is kind of a, this really great uh, amalgamation of three different sets. Um, did, did you have a swatch to show us as well? So we have yes, an idea yes. of how those paints look like. Yeah, this is uh, the swatches I made this morning. Let's get mm -hmm. that over. Of all the colors, let me get the light. There we go. Oh, that's really, cool. well, you got every, everything you need there. Yeah, and these and these colors here, you can see there's a really nice combination of pastel mm -hmm. colors and then muted colors and then the brighter colors. So it's perfect for, you know, that that urban art. Yeah, that sounds perfect, and that looks really that looks like like it's really fun as well. Thank you for showing this. Thank you for showing us. Okay, we got some questions. Perry Nealon is asking, do you know the weight of the paper? Yeah, the, the weight of this paper, of, of all of the, if, um, I think the Intense Paper, right, Charlotte, and uh, pretty much it's 300 GSM, which is a very heavy oh, cool. paper, so it's, you know, it's very heavy weight. So you yeah. can throw pretty much every, everything at it. Okay. And I've, I've, I also know that some of the colors are, are really light fast. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Charlotte... <laughs> Uh, yeah, some of the colors, uh, are the light fastness is rated quite high, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you, Jed. So all, all of them, um, apart from autumn brown, are completely 100% light fast. Um, autumn brown is actually number five on the blue wool scale, and um, all the rest are six and above. And the line makers as well are light fast as well, and they're permanent, so. Wow. So, so th mm -hmm. that those those colors will last a lot longer than most of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which, that's, that's quite a sad way of looking at it, but it's still true. <laughs> no legacy. We're talking about legacy. Of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Jackie Leonard is asking, "What is what is?" Well, I'm assuming, assuming she's asking, "What is ink tense made of? How do you get the colors so vibrant? Because that looks really cool." Um, so, it, sorry, Jed, were you going to answer there? Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, okay. <laughs> So, it is, yeah, so um, the reason that it's called ink tense is not because it's ink based, but it's because it behaves like an ink. So, it is pigment based and it's just kind of really, really vibrant pigment. But the way that it behaves like an ink is that it, it's permanent once it's dry but that allows you to create those really vibrant and dynamic layers. So it's not, it doesn't behave like a kind of classic watercolor where, you know, as soon as you start lay, layering, you know, you're kind of creating that cauliflower effect almost, aren't you? And you're kind of um, compromising the layers underneath, but ink tense doesn't behave like that. And um, yeah, within this set, we've actually got six um, ink tense paint pans. Um, so yeah, so they're really great to work with. And Jedediah, I know that you you love working with Inktens, don't you? You're an Inktens pro. Yeah, yeah, I've been working with Inktens uh, a, a lot uh, with the, with mm -hmm. the uh, the pencils as well and the and the mm. pigment blocks. Uh, mm -hmm. It is great. It's a great uh, pigment. It's I love it because it's sort of like what Charlotte was mentioning. Uh, it it's, takes on a different characteristic than watercolor. It's mm -hmm. sort of the balance between watercolor and gouache you know sometimes i can't decide you know how you can't decide mm -hmm. when you're using a gouache or watercolor because gouache is mm -hmm. more opaque and right. you can really layer that opacity and then you have mm -hmm. the transparency of watercolor 
I love it because it has that, it sort of balances between those two mm -hmm. quite perfectly. Well, while mm -hmm. staying nice and vibrant and mm -hmm. lasting a long time. What more could you ask for? <laughs> It's the perfect set, guys. It's the perfect set. <laughs> and when is this set? Is it available everywhere already? Um, so it's not available yet. So this is brand new, hot off the press. You guys are first to know about it, which is um, fantastic. So it's actually launching in the UK kind of middle to end of April and then um, worldwide from kind of May time because, of course, it takes a little bit longer than to ship out and everything. So, so yeah, it's very exciting. Um, so keep an eye on our website, so um, doeandart.com, um, and um, we'll have all the information on there from kind of April time. So have a little look on there um, just to – and then you can click the Notify Me button as well, so you'll be told when it's in stock to purchase. Sounds good. Sounds exciting. <laughs> I can see people getting very – Oh, that's great uh, news. Uh, people get excited. Anything that is good for urban sketches, I think is good. I mean, people like to try all sorts mm -hmm. of things and you got light fasteners and, you know, it's such a compact kit. Sounds really mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, I think yeah. um, you've got several questions that are very technical. So our expert in the comments is going to help you. All of you viewers, mm -hmm. our expert in the comments on behalf of Derwent will be answering those questions. Very cool. Well, that wraps up our segment really quickly. We'll take one more quick question. Let's see if there's got, uh, are there, okay, let's take this one from Perry Nealon. Are there bound sketchbooks with the ink pens paper? We have, Perry, we haven't, we haven't looked at that just yet, but we have got um, paper, new paper in the pipeline, and we're constantly looking at how we can um, take our products to the next level. So absolutely, if that's something that you guys think would be, you know, a real plus, um, it's definitely something that we'll consider because, um, as I say, we're always innovating. So that's definitely something that we could look at in the future. Well, well, that's the kind of feedback you were just talking about, Charlotte. So maybe that's something to take back to Derwin. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. they, yeah, so they, so they are actually, so they, they're a paper pad. It's not just individual pieces of paper, but they're not kind of in a sort of, you know, um, sketchbook. Wide, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Sketchbook format. Okay. Parting words, Jet. Advice for the sketchers and something that you think that one thing they really need to try if they're going to get this set. I just, you know, go for it. Go, go try it. I, I mean, I've been enjoying it pretty much every day that I can with if it was right. Uh, and uh, let me know what you what you think. And you know, Derwin, uh, Charlotte, and the Derwin team—they're just incredible with really just with with accepting feedback from artists. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have any questions or any you know, any concerns, bring them up and, the, you know, we, they make adjustments. It's really great working with them. So really go and try it and, and you'll enjoy it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you both so much for being on the show, bringing this to light. I think uh, we're going to have lots of people interested and they'll go mm -hmm. check it out. So uh, Derwent Art Official, right? Correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jedi Door. Yes, to check out Jed's work. <laughs> Thank you both. Uh, we hope to see you again another time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> see you. See you next Bye. time. Bye. Okay. Thank you all so much. If you've just tuned in, uh, welcome to USK Talks. We just had a segment with Derwent the brand that's, you know, lots of us have uh, stuff in our toolkit from Derwent. And we thank them very much again for sponsoring that segment. And now we get to the, we're, we're gonna bring on Mario. For those of you who don't know Mario, well, actually, I don't think there's anybody in the viewers, <laughs> among the viewers who don't know Mario. Hello, Mario, coming in all the way from Lisbon. How are you? Hey, Rob, I'm fine, thank you. And how are you in Hong Kong? <laughs> really good. I'm, I'm welcoming the spring slowly with this floral shirt, although it's kind of dark right now, but <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Mario, you have got such a lot of information for us, and it's really exciting to see what you're going to share. Um, for those of you who don't know Mario, here he is. That's his hero shot. That's him on Instagram, Linarish at dot dot mister. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Linarish. No, it's, we can't it's, wait to get started. <laughs> actually, it's my, my two names, Mario, Rafael, uh -huh. Rafael. Oh, 
Oh, that's that, not Mister. <laughs> that is something new to me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Well yeah. then, Mario, I have to ask you first. How did you go about researching for today's show? Because, I mean, it's it, is it easy to find out find a lot of information about women sketchers? And for us, I mean, it's like a something that that's very near and dear to us. Well, um, the info is out there. We just need to 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 spend time searching for the info. But actually, there there is more info about other stuff. So. Um, I think for the names that we will highlight today, for those who are watching, they can definitely go and search for more info about exhibitions, books they, that they have. And some of the names, they are not so well uh, researched already. So maybe there are some few sketchers that uh, want to know more and maybe find more stuff about them. <laughs> Well, viewers, um, I think this is one episode that you might have to re-watch a few times, pause it, screenshot it or something. Mario's got uh, lots of interesting information. And, and ahead of time, I'm going to tell you, yes, there are books that you can refer to. So <laughs> you, can, you can look out for those. But because we've got so much information to dive into, Mario, let's just jump into that already. And <clears throat> let me share my screen. And let's get into it. So, introduce us to these ladies. Yeah, we will start with these five. Um, actually, I don't know if I will talk less about them because it's so difficult to uh, select what to share with the Urban Sketches community, how they are connected to us. But we will start with these five in, with short info so people can know them and can go to the Google and search for more. Uh, and then we will try to go deeper into two more names. But yeah, the first one will be Marianne North. And maybe you yeah, <laughs> show us the next slide. Yeah. Yes. So she, she was born in England. Um, actually, the, the, the story is funny because she was trained as a vocalist, but then her voice, her voice failed. And she devoted herself to, to painting. She, at this time, all the ladies, they were, um, they trained to do a lot of, of stuff and painting and drawing was also one of those uh, things. But where she really nailed it and make the difference were uh, about the oil paintings and the botanic um, paintings that she did. Why? Because at that, at that time, only, well, not only, but mainly the watercolors were supposed to be the technique to use in the uh, landscape or to paint flowers or so on. And she used the oil paintings and she highlighted strongly the the lights and the colors so that was really fascinating at the time mm -hmm. she traveled all over the world it was amazing she started wow. in switzerland mainly europe but then all over the world and we have yeah and also she discovered um, a plant one thing that is really connected to us is the fact that she always tried to give the context of the plant in the specific place. So she not paint only the, the, the zoom, zoom in of, of the plant and the leaves, but also the, the location. Here we see even the scales, she put animals or temples so we can understand how that plant is related with the, with the local context. In, in the environment. I mean, this one in particular is amazing. I just had to show that one again, because that is so good. Yeah, yeah. And the last image from Marianne North that I have is this one. Yeah, made in Japan. She, she, she went there, which is also amazing, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. And I really like this one, why? Because I was saying about the context, and here we see in the foreground, we see the plant and she was always focused about that. But then we see the boats, we see the, the water, we see some action happening there because there are some fishermen and we see the Mount Fuji. So we inst inst instantly, we, are, um, we know where we are, 
right? It's yeah. not only about the plant, but it's the plants in a specific place. It's springtime with a view yeah. of Mount Fuji with this wisteria going. I mean, it's, 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 it's fantastic. And there is a book. Yeah, well, because we know, Rob, when we talk about history, all the people want to know more. So I, I wanted to at least give one book, not for all of them, but Marianne, uh, there is this book, which is, um, I, well, I recommend this book for those who want to know more. And in England, um, she, you, you will find a lot of info as well. She has a, a house in the middle of the garden with a lot, a lot of her paintings. She planned to have um, a tea house with uh, like a, a gallery in, in tea house, but it's only a gallery. <laughs> wow. But yeah, with still, still that, that's very cool to hear. Oh, was she, Alexandra's asking, was she self taught? Well, she had classes uh, and she started late with 37 years old, um, oil, oil, oil painting classes. And after discovering the oils, she was completely hooked to, to that. And she <laughs> never, yeah, she never quit the, the, the oils. But she, she also used watercolors and, and drawing, but it's mainly the oil painting that uh, she, she used, but she had classes, yes. Um, you can tell she's highly skilled. And the, the cover for this book, is it also her painting? No, I don't believe so, but I, I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't, I don't, I don't have that info. <laughs> okay. Very cool. All right. First All one right. to check out, Marianne North. Next up. Yeah. Um, Amelia. Amelia is a really fascinating uh, person and because she did write a lot. She was um, a promise writer, even in young age, when she has six years old, she wrote his first poem. And actually, I, I think she, the way she described her drawings or the way she illustrated her writings, they are really, really connected. I don't know exactly if she could do this uh, without writing or, mm. uh, or, or, or drawing. So this image is really uh, amazing because this is the, the, one of the statues of Abu Simbel in Egypt. She's one of the e Egyptologists. Um, and when she, when she saw these monuments, she realized that there were some marks because 50 years uh, earlier, um, there were some plastic, uh, how do you say in English? I have, yeah, plastic, plaster casts to oh. make the, the model of, of that giant uh, monument. But the model was, wasn't due it in, in, the, in the perfect way. So there was some rests of, of plaster. And mm -hmm. so she decided to put that structure together and climb to clean the monument Whoa. with with a team that she she were who were with her, with her and and that was really a key moment for her because she realized that among the tourists that was do, were doing graf graffitis on 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 the rocks mm -hmm. the um, heritage was really being damaged so when when she returned to england she started uh, an amazing project um, of Egypt exploration uh, fund to, to start talking more about that. Yeah, these drawings are amazing because she had, she had a, a really great sense of humor. And I have a quotation here to read, um, also related with, with the sand because Painting in, in Egypt uh, with a lot of sand is not uh, easy, but also because of the sand. So she said, it feels about, about the sand. She wrote, if it fills your hair, your eyes, your water bottles, seals up your color box, dries into your skies and reduces your Chinese white to a gritty paste of color uh, of salad dressing. As for the flies, <laughs> They have a morbid appetite for watercolors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so she made funny from to herself about the situation and even here with the crocodiles and so on. So and and she wrote um, an amazing book and we have the book for to to share with 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 the community. But here we see she always put a, a human, a figure human drawing to for us to understand the scale of the monuments. This is a great example of, of her work. And she was always concerned about the how, how can we preserve this heritage? Because at the time there, there were no rules. And mm -hmm. so among the, the, how do you say I have the name here? Because I never remember um, the Tamils. Because the next image we will see the guys that were going to find gold and mm -hmm. and she was really concerned about this. Um, okay. All right, Lydia from San Diego is asking, do you know what media, media this was drawn in? What media did she use? I mean, obviously she was like, she was really urban sketching on location, painting, drawing, whatever it is to capture. Do you know what they used? Well, pencils for so I don't know if they were their went probably because the the brand is old <laughs> enough to. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It was um, and and ink watercolor because she wrote about that. But the book that she wrote, she tell us a lot about that. I didn't read. I didn't have the time to read the book, only to prepare some of the stuff. But the idea also is to give you some of. Um, inside so you can go and search for more ah, yeah teasers yeah teasers <laughs> people okay right well it, yeah well yeah um yeah the tomb riders tomb riders always searching for uh antiques to to sell yeah though so we can understand the scale of of mm. the monuments and how deeply touched by the the heritage so when she returned to, to England, she also helped to develop Egyptology, Egyptology as a discipline at the university. And oh, she wow. lectured all over England and also North America. So she became really recognized. Uh, Amelia, she, even today among the, the speci specialities, Mm -hmm. um, she's referred as the godmother of Egyptology. So, wow. Yeah, wow. Uh, See, we're learning so much today. That, that's incredible. And, and this book looks fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So she wrote, so, uh, she wrote this book based on the notes that she did because she was a writer, but also a, a, a sketcher. Mm -hmm. So, I think two years later, I'm not sure, but maybe two years later, she wrote this book and became a, a bestseller. So this is maybe the first cover of the book of the first edition, but you can find the book uh, online and buy it. And it's it really pays off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think it's incredibly inspiring. I mean, it, it looks like something you could definitely want to curl up and read. And now we have a sense of who she is. And she was actually out there in the desert and drawing and sketching sand in her hair and everything. I think yeah. I saw uh, in the comments, Karen Moore was saying, the quotes bring a whole new dimension. If she hadn't written them down, we never would have known about the circumstances she faced. And I think that is so true. That's why it's so important for us as urban sketches to capture the story also and tell people about that. Yeah, it's not about it's not all about the drawing. It's everything that it's behind in front of related to the drawing. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we will just be looking at the technique and the proportions and the perspective. Yeah. But the drawing has so much more to tell. Absolutely. <laughs> next. Up. Yeah, next. Um, yeah, this is the, 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 only, the only one that I didn't find a picture to share. And so there is some mystery. So for those who are listening, if you can find a picture of Olivia Tongue, <laughs> Uh, it will be amazing. Send it to Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and her Mario, story... Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Mario, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Her story is also really fascinating because 
She was born in Wales, so again, United Kingdom. And her father, she, uh, he was a really famous landscape painter. And he tried to teach uh, Olivia how to do landscape watercolors. But even after 12 lessons of perspective, and he really tried, but she, she couldn't do it. And her, uh, her father gave up on her. And, and she was sad because of that. But some years later, she realized that there was a reason to not be able to do the landscape. It was because she was short sight. You see, she didn't, she wasn't able to see at the distance, only really close. Ah, she was short sighted. Wow. Yeah. That that's something that you wouldn't think about. I mean, we have glasses nowadays for that. But if you're exactly. short-sighted, you only draw stuff that's close to, I mean, within your line. Exactly. Of and that's why the examples that we have to show are really close up. And for those who believe that, okay, maybe um, for urban sketches, you need to do a complete scene and so on. She solved that problem with the writing. So we see a lot of close-up uh, elements and these crocodiles are because she went, she went to India and she spent there uh, a lot of time to sketch and she realized that people ate uh, the, the flesh of the crocodile. So she was fascinated about that. And she wrote uh, about all that context that she couldn't draw because she, she couldn't see at the distance. And the, the other examples that we have are really beautiful for us to understand that sometimes the context, we can give the context with the written notes. So you, yeah. you can spend time looking really close to something and then you add the written notes. Mm -hmm. And so she spent, she, well, after she married and she, when, when the daughters were adults, she went to India, she, she stayed there for two or three years, I can't remember exactly. But then she came back and she stopped drawing and dedicated herself to gardening. <laughs> and probably because of the, the eyes, eyesight uh, issues. And, and she never drew again. So she, oh. the, that trip to India was the only, she filled up, 16 check, uh, sketchbooks and wow. it was the the only time in her life that she really dedicated to to drawing what a shame i mean look at her skill i'm just looking at this i mean they didn't have cameras in those days and it, and well they did they did have cameras yeah, well, but you know you'd have to pose people and yeah it has to be like this like she's captured things happening in action i mean i don't she think that's yeah, she was really talent, and that's why I think, uh, yeah, Olivia, this this example is really fascinating. And uh, for those who live in England, <laughs> they can search more and 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 try to figure out why why she stopped and and uh, dedicate herself to gardening only until the rest of of his days, her days. <laughs> I I just I just saw in the comments that somebody did a quick Google. Um, and <laughs> uh, Dezegni Intaska said, according to Google, she is still alive and 162 <laughs> years old. You know what? We have proof because she did last week's challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Is> maybe. <laughs> Indian sweets. <laughs> she saw the show and she did the challenge. Right yeah, this, this is so, so beautiful. The, the colors that she captured. Mm -hmm. So we can see that um, sometimes when you have uh, an issue like uh, short sight or you, you should focus on the potential of what you can do and not what you cannot do. And this is a, a great example of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting hungry looking at these because <laughs> these are some things that I recognize. I see, like, well, there are a few people in, from India in our in our audience. I see a uh, jalebi. I think this is a barfi, and that that looks like a laddu. 
I don't know the others, but I, if you haven't tried those, if you haven't tried Indian sweets, they are, they are beyond imagination. The things that they put in there to flavor things, it's amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to make everybody hungry. It's time to move on. Okay. <laughs> Who do we have up next, Mario? So now we have Margaret Fontaine. And this is also an amazing um, story, an amazing woman. And... She was educated at home by her mother. And she, when she was learning how to write, she kept doing a diary until the rest of her life. So we have a lot of um, diaries and sketchbooks uh, from Margaret. And she, yeah, well, the, the, the sketchbooks are these uh, involved with silk sleeves and her, fascinating was about butterflies and she discovered that passion when she traveled to Switzerland uh, because of uh, a love uh, uh, well her heart was broken <laughs> because of that and she traveled to Switzerland and she found the, the butterflies there and she started sketching and painting and writing about that and Actually, she wrote, after that, she received uh, one uncle from her, gave her the money that she needed to use how, and well, she, she could pick the way that to use the money. And she decided, I want to travel the world and find new butterflies. And she wrote, let me, let me read, mm -hmm. I derived the greatest pleasure from traveling. I like the idea of knocking about the world and getting used to the ways and customs of man. <laughs> so all that that it was kind of reserved to men, that traveling, taking pictures, uh, drawing, painting, she wanted to do it. And she decided, I will not uh, get married. I, I'm not a person to stay at home uh, and taking care of the home. No, I will travel like the men uh, used to do. And it was a lot of courage. She And, and so she filled a lot of sketchbooks with the butterflies. But the main, what, what is really amazing about this is she died in 1940. And her sketchbooks, um, let me read. The sketchbooks were in um, in a chest, in an old chest in the archive of the Norwich Castle Museum. And only after almost 40 years, uh, a small group of researchers discovered that old chest with all her sketchbooks. Wow. And they found, oh, we have something here. And this person is really important. So during her entire life, she was traveling. Actually, she died, um, she died in, in, in uh, where? Let me read, in Trinidad, Trinidad. She died in Trinidad uh, with a heart attack. And so no one exactly knew. So in, but the sketchbooks were preserved there. And when the researchers found uh, the, the, that material, they were completely overwhelmed because it was a, an entire life dedicated to yeah. traveling and finding butterflies. She was a naturalist. I mean, she was doing all this incredible documentation and also, again, so skilled. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Someone just said in the comments, Terry, terrible. What a story sounds like a movie. Yeah, somebody needs to make these movies. Any, yeah. any filmmakers out there, check it out and make a film. I agree completely. Next okay, up. Okay, next. Uh, <laughs> and also, as we get into all these sketches, Mario, are, are these all from, where are these women from? Yeah, well, uh, we will be talking about seven and six are from England. <laughs> oh, from the UK. Okay. So yeah. the one and who's not English, you have to let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. I will. But okay. there, there is a reason because England at the time, they had the, um, the perfect conditions to do this because they were really rich. They, they afford to travel. England was, yeah, dominating the world at the time. Yeah. Right. So Margaret Mee, she was um, 
an artist in England, and she decided to go to Brazil and teach there for two years in the British School of Sao Paulo. And once there, with her boyfriend at the time, uh, with husband, her boyfriend at the time, wow, that's very <laughs> progressive. <laughs> yeah. And she discovered the idea of going into the Amazonia forest. And she decided to uh, paint the, the flower that she never saw. And the, the main thing here is she um, painted all the flowers on location, always. She never took a flower to, to, the, to their home. And, and to sketch later. No, everything on location and, and it, it was really, really beautiful. But her main project was to paint the, let me say the right name, the moonflower um, plant. Because the- Moonflower plant. Moon, moonflower. Oh. Because only on, when you have full moon, that flower blooms. But in the same night that it blooms, it will die. It dies. Oh, I have heard of this. Okay. <laughs> uh, right now, these are heliconias, looks like. Uh, yeah. Species and off, and moon. I think the, ne yeah, the next one, I this? believe, yeah, this one. So she, she spent 24 years trying to discover that flower in the perfect moment mm. about to to bloom and then she when she found the 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 flower just about to bloom she went there by the night mm -hmm. she was there with all the sketching materials the watercolors on the top of the boat close to the to the flower and on on the moon moonlight she saw and she wrote let me say she recalled it like a magnificent moment when she saw wow. the flower opening and then dying and she she did the, the drawing on location and then she painted uh, based on this drawing and the the, the more fascinating um, fact is that the, in the following year the, when the, she discovered the, the 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 plant and she was able to sketch it uh, with 79 years she when she was in england she died in a car crash accident oh. So yeah, another another movie for this because and actually there is a movie, a Brazilian oh. movie about her life in in her work. So if people find uh, search on YouTube, you will find uh, that info. It I think it's called uh, the Moonflower. If you if you Google Margaret Me and Moonflower, you will find the, the movie. Margaret Me and Moonflower. Okay, yeah, that's. That's going to be a combo. I think lots of people are going to start Googling. All right. <laughs> oh, we come to our final two. Yeah, we are, we are walking uh, quickly, but uh, yeah. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're at a good pace, I think. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, so Alexandrine Tine, or Teen, it depends on the, on the accent. It's a Dutch a young woman, and she is an uh, unbelievable uh, woman because she also decided not to marry and to spend her life traveling, trying to discover the source of the Nile. That was the main, wow. one, of, one of the main um, goals for all the explorers to the north of Africa. They, they, they went to Egypt, they saw the Nile and they wanted to discover the, the source of the Nile, but it was so dangerous. It was really sure. dangerous. And so she did some previous travelings with her mother, uh, her hunt, and some of the travellers... Yeah, sorry. Which one in this photo is Alexandrine? It's one of the... Uh, on the left. So Alexandrine uh, the or the Alexine... Okay. Yeah, we can we can call it Alexine, which is also correct. <laughs> okay. and, and yeah, this is yeah. on Egypt with uh, her mother and aunt. One of the previous uh, travels to Egypt, 
she was really wealthy and with royal connections in Dutchland, not Dutchland, in, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And um, actually she, she said, I want to travel. And she said this, let me, let me read. Uh, if anything were to happen to me during my travels, if I would be killed, which is a reasonable possibility because it was really dangerous to travel in, in that area at the time. She wrote to his brother in England, you will not lament me. I have never understood the happiness of growing old. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, she's such a fighter. I mean, okay, Mari, I got to ask you, because you've done all these research on these amazing women. I could see also that someone wanted to know Thea Ernest, wondering how Mario got interested in the subject of Victorian women sketchers. Um, and also, <laughs> when you're researching them, uh, like, I'm, I'm curious, it, it takes so much, even now, for an urban sketcher to go out and do a lot of things that they're passionate about. These women were back in the day when there were so many expectations from them to, like, be at home, you know, they can't really do, have their own life and all that. That must have been really hard. So what did you find out about that sort of thing, Mario? Um, it, yeah, well, actually, when, when, she, when she was in, in Cairo, in Egypt, all the men, uh, they wrote, the, the, this, this woman is crazy. She's crazy. It's, she doesn't know the danger that she's risking. And actually, she died there uh, really young. I'm, I'm already saying that because, um, but, and her mother uh, fell ill there as well. But how, I'm, how am I getting curious and I do my research about this? I think it's um, when when we are really passionate about what we do, and in my case, I like to find the roots of the roots of our uh, passion. And right. yeah, well, I talked about Delacroix on season one, John Ruskin, and in our team meetings, we were talking about we need to talk about women sketchers, and so. Yeah, and, and I started to, okay, I think there, there is a really good point and I have a lot of books in, in my home, in my house, and I started to read the books in a different way. So, because sometimes we read the books and we just read what we are intended to, to, to search for. But this time I was trying to find, oh, there is some, someone is sharing and saying something about a woman. So you keep the name and then you go research. But yeah, this talk was prepared only for USK Talks because I, I, I knew really uh, nothing about them. I need, yeah, I, need, I, know, I knew that there were you, uh, women doing these um, travelers and travelings and explorers, but um, so much in detail it was it was impossible to know because we in art school in the university of fine arts we with with art history classes we don't learn about these women we need to go there and search it well i'm glad that we're changing this um the whole urban sketching community the culture that we are we are encouraging and all that i mean there were two guys and we're talking in women's history month about these amazing women who are painting we have an audience with lots of an ama of amazing women as well this suggestion came like i remember the first time we said oh what we're going to do and then ludi just said we should talk about women sketchers and then mm -hmm. Mario went and did the research, and here we are. So I can see lots of people are enjoying this, so I'm not going to interrupt the flow. Mario, let's get back to... Yeah, um, well, <clears throat> um, she the, the her drawings are not so famous, mm -hmm. and this is one really nice video that we are showing about the, the, the track, the, the path that they did uh, along the, the Nile, and she brought um, furniture, uh, cutlery, silver cutlery. <laughs> she, she brought a lot of stuff from the Netherlands. And 
Actually, this is, uh, I highly recommend this um, TV show, All Helen Heroes, season two. She de he dedicated two episodes to Alexine Tine, Tine. And for those who want to, to know more in detail uh, her life, uh, this is a really nice way to, to know more. Because it's a, it's it's just to watch a video. You don't need to read a book. <laughs> and you were saying, uh, Mario, that this video is on YouTube, right? Yes. Okay. It's so available. We've we've put the name of the the show, O'Hanlon Heroes Season Two. So go find that on YouTube after this. Watch this first. <laughs> yeah, not now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after that, go have fun watching that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then well, she the the idea was to find the source of the Nile, and she, the her drawings are not so famous. If you go to Google and search for Alexine Teen, you will find a lot of pictures because she did amazing pictures, but the drawings are more difficult to find. Um, but she did in the desert, and the other one, please show us mm -hmm. on the river because. The the boat was huge with a lot of stuff, and she did she did have at the time to to sketch. And finally, she arrived in the confluence of the two Niles, the White Nile and the Blue Nile, that come together. But at that time, and that that's the next slide. Please show us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one where we can see the two rivers coming into one, right? Oh. But they stopped here. They didn't go further because it was impossible because of the cataracts, and and then they decided to come back to Cairo, and during the travels because it was really deep into Africa, she saw a lot of uh, strong things like s slavery between the 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 people, and she was really concerned. So she. Took also a lot of pictures, and I think I think we have pictures yep, uh, got after these. Yes. Wow. So um, these were taken by her. Yes. Wow. Yes. She really had a lot of equipment, not just yeah. solo cutlery. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and she was able to. I think not only the sketching skills, but the way she decided who to take a picture and how, because the the female the female on the right. Uh, Abiba, she was the um, she, she was the um, the wife of her f uh, main um, companion, mm -hmm. uh, leading lo local leader, and this picture in particular is really awesome because she was posing, of course, because you you needed to wait to to take a picture That's because hard. that yeah. yeah. And but it was a it, it's not a royal posing, it's a um, yes. daily, daily yeah. situation, right? You are just relaxing with your baby on your in your arms, and this is really amazing because you are highlighting a woman, a simple woman, um, that is not important, it's not the royalty, local royalty, it's just a, a woman, and and it's an amazing picture, it's unbelievable, yeah. Again, she it's took a lot. It's the same woman, and I have a lot of them, so you can yeah. just show. Because we understand that she was fascinated about her and also the, the way they dressed. And mm -hmm. she also did a drawing after these, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, this one. And on the left, we see on the top and the bottom her style of life in the Netherlands, right? Mm -hmm. Where you see the dress, the long dress. Right. And on the right, you see the tents that you need to use in the desert. So she was comparing. This is the, the life that I used to, be, to have in the Netherlands. And on the right, the life that I have now. And she was comparing and trying to understand, should I go back and just live the way I used to live or should I stay here and and enjoy this new way of life and she decided to stay <laughs> and we're glad she did yeah and yeah again uh, her drawings are not so famous but she 
we can understand that she was trained in when she was younger because um, this is not so only self-taught because it's, it was really difficult at the time. And f among the high society, it was quite, quite common to, to have uh, drawing classes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And here, again, the people, the costumes, uh, the dresses, um, this is really, really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, all the women you've introduced, like their skills are really, really good. I mean, and they've obviously, I mean, the fact that they're capturing things on location as well, the detail, the documentation, uh, I'm so glad you brought these to light. Yeah, and even if she, when she traveled, she, uh, she, I think we, I cannot read, but I, the name of the dog is Motushka, I believe. I cannot read from here, but <laughs> yeah, she, she, she brought five dogs, and she traveled with in 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 Egypt with more than 100 camels and a lot of people. But even even though the, she had the time to relax and sketch the interior of the room where she was sleeping, and that's that's really amazing. And that she, even if you have the the pyramids and if you have so many interesting things, you spend time sketching the the room where you are going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's documented all kinds of things. And, and, and actually, with the particular sketches that you chose, you can see her, her skills. I don't know when you yeah. did that on purpose. It's like her skills improved. Yeah. Like the way you captured the light in, in the pillars in this particular one. And from the, yeah. like, it's, it's really remarkable stuff. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, well, when she, when she failed to... To reach the source of the Nile, she decided to come back. She, uh, her mother, died on the way because she needed to. They needed to wait, so she got malaria and and she, yeah, it was a really difficult moment for her. But then she decided, okay, so I will try to cross the desert of Sahara, and that was her final journey, because one night the two Aregs. Um, attacked the the camping, and one of one of the guards were discussing, and she went off the tent, and looks like because we don't know exactly what happened, looks like she came off the tent and said something. Hey, she raised her hand, and with a sword they cut off the hand. She fall, and she stay there, bleeding to death. And oh. the body was never recovered. She, the age was 33 years old, really wow. young. So we have a lot of letters from her. Uh, we have the drawings, we have the pictures, and we have uh, an amazing book that we can recommend, of course, this one, The Faithful Journey, uh, that talks specifically about that final, not the final, yeah, that final expedition. Um, and again, it's it's an amazing story of um, courage, um, fearless, um, and, and even in the world of men, uh, of explorers, she was there uh, doing her path and caring nothing about the voices around saying, you are crazy. Yeah. Another amazing story. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, and this is the, um, the TV show. Ah, uh, okay. The All right. So people can, um, the, well, this is the website, but on YouTube, you will find uh, those two episodes about Alexine Tine. Okay. Yeah. And let's move on because time is flying. <laughs> yes, time is flying. One more to go. Yeah, then final one, Adela Breton, a British and she was uh, from a family that uh, was used to travel because her father was a part of the Navy, the Royal Navy. And she uh, decided to travel to Mexico and to spend there 
time sketching. Actually, she traveled first to Canada, but then she discovered Mexico and the temples. And once there, she um, took this guide, the Pablo, I think he's Pablo, his name. And um, when she discovered the temples, the temples actually, they were about to be discovered, those ones. So they kept the, the frescoes inside with the paintings, with the colors, they were still there. And she realized that I need to paint these before it fades away, before it disappears. So she started painting a lot of these remains in heritage places. And again, this is a, an amazing example with, he, he, she asked her guide to go there to give that sense of scale of the monument, mm -hmm. which is uh, really uh, amazing because otherwise we didn't know exactly. Oh, she yeah. was really talented and because she also studied in Florence because um, they all, Almost all of them, they did first the grand tour in Europe, Italy, and they, they learn um, the drawing lessons in, in her case, in Adela's case, um, in, in Florence. But the, she became famous because of the um, fresco. So you can show us yeah. more of... We will get to that. We'll get but to um, that. Just, just looking at this also, I mean, this... Yeah, this this is... her, I mean, she, Adele, she's like particularly skilled. Like she's really, really good at this. She could, in this day today, she would be an excellent illustrator. Yeah, and also in this particular place, um, it was really difficult to stay more than a few days. And she stayed weeks and sometimes months in the middle of the Mexican jungle. <laughs> with no conditions and because she was alone and she didn't care. So she had the guide and the guide provided the food and everything. And all the men around, they also said, uh, oh, uh, you are crazy. But in fact, what they were jealous about her drawing skills because what, they, what the men were doing was really low quality compared with what, <laughs> what Adele was doing. <laughs> Okay, Karen's asking, did they mix their own paints? I'm curious about their supplies. That's true. I am also curious. How did they how did these women go away for so long and what kind of supplies did they take take with them? Yeah, we, we see clearly that they they use watercolors and we know that watercolors, if we use them, if we use them in the right way, they 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 long ears, the can long ears. And, and these are not really large uh, watercolors. They are small drawings in the sketchbooks. So in really controlled painting, because she was really trying to be faithful to the colors, to understand the, the pigments. And she also wrote that the pigments were like uh, the classical music in the, in the partiture, the, the tunes. So she said, the way they painted these, uh, these are like music. What, uh, looking at the, the colors are like music, which is wow. nice. That is, well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. And I mean, she, her, her work is so sensitive. I mean, this is a painting. It looks like a photograph to me. And it's so <laughs> well done. Yeah, and I, I, it's interesting because the, the white spaces are mm -hmm. the ones that when she was there, they were already um, vanished. So mm. it reminds us, at least, uh, the John Ruskin <laughs> drawings in Venice that he, he left blank as well. So they had something in common. I think genius people had something in common, even if they are men or women. If they are genius, they are genius, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And he was saying that she was recording all these things so that because she had, she instinctually knew that they would disappear. Yeah. At point. Okay, so you've got a video also of something that was reconstructed, right? Based on what she did. Yeah. Um, this is this is also on you on YouTube, so we can, uh, if you Google it, you you will find. So this is a way that we can understand that it. it's only possible today 
to see the paintings that were inside the temples because of Adela's work, because there was there were no color uh, photography at the time, and her drawing and watercolor skills were so accurate, and she spent so many days there sketching inside. So these are mainly battlefields and the stories uh, about the, the winners of the wars. And, and so she did all of this. She, she and, and then this is a 3D reconstruction. Wow. So we can understand the, and even these doors, we saw the, the previous slide, the, she, she was trying to, um, Paint the, the, those panels in their exact form, not is not to show. Oh, this, this is a, a nice entrance to the temple with a perspective. No, she was trying to um, do a drawing that she knew that he this will be used in the future, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. <laughs> she's was, she's basically recording like a, like an archaeologist. Yeah, she, yeah, she was an archaeologist. Also, because she, her home homeland in in England, it was Bath, and Bath in England is one of the most important places with Roman from the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. They had the Bath uh, remains, the terms you see, and I think that's that's why she became an archaeologist because if in your hometown you have a lot of ruins from the Roman Empire, you will get uh, emotional about that i believe so yeah. i i mean i can imagine too um uh, i can see joy in the comments was asking like why why were all these women painting ruins and and botany and plants and all that uh i would i would too <laughs> i think if you when you live in that particular environment especially i think the the women in those days they wouldn't have had as much time or, or the luxury to paint whatever you want, like the way we do now. So when she had to pick a passion, she would have picked something that wouldn't be, you know, really out there. Yeah, and um, also so I think I think she she knew that um, they were in a particular place, and if they won't do it, no one will do it. And when you know that that okay, I need to do this, otherwise we will lose this info forever. Right. Um, when you are in that situation, you just do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is it. It's like an an all encompassing passion. And yeah. This her. is a, a really nice uh, example as well. This, so this is one of the um, what's the name petroglyph. So hmm. you see the god of maize on the on the main rock. So he's hmm. he's grabbing a, a maize. Um, plant ah. and yeah and she she understood that okay in this rock if i don't do it it will disappear so yeah it's it's a beautiful piece this one it is um after okay. after let me just share one more thing so sure. the in in 1910 um the mexican revolution started and she wasn't able to go there again so she started to travel to other places, but she always, even even those drawings that she make, um, were never so relevant like these ones. And I think this is connected with the the the, the question that we were trying to answer like, uh, before, because she did some drawings, but it was she she did feel that those drawings in Mexico were the really important ones. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, to have this level of dedication, to be able to do this kind of thing. And, and you know, it, it's not just that she can paint so well. It was her passion. I mean, she would have spent years doing this, right? Um, okay, in, in the comments, uh, Roshin is asking whether... <laughs> Um, any of these women were mothers. Fair mm -hmm. question. I mean, yeah. obviously, well, this takes a lot of time to do. Actually, do you know? only only the one the the one that I don't have a picture, Olivia Tongue, 
Only that one was a mother. All the other ones, they decided to not mm -hmm. get married, not have a family, and just spend our lives drawing and sketching and traveling and exploring the world. And that's that's an option, uh, I believe. And it was. It looks like today it's a, it's a difficult option, but in the 19th century, it's an even harder option. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So, for those who who wants to know more about uh, Adela Breton uh, works, this is a great book, The Art of Ruins, um, and also the other book. And the other book was my starting point to prepare this lecture. One. So, this is a great book. Um, in they have more women here, and uh, of course, a lot of men, <laughs> explorers, sketchbooks. Uh, it's it's not all of them are connected with urban sketchers, but um, I think the majority are. And one one really important thing is they were on location. They were close to the to the to to what they wanted to report back. So that's that's a really important link for us today. Okay. Wow. Okay, Mario. It's <laughs> been it's been fascinating so far. And just looking through the comments, I can see how everyone's really, really, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for doing this research. And we're not done done yet. We still have one more part of the show. Um, let's head to that and and the challenge for the week also in honor of all the amazing women that we know, Women's History Month, International Women's Day. So take it away, Mario. Tell everybody what to do. Well, the challenge, I think it's um, a really important challenge to, to sketch a woman that we believe that needs to be sketched, need to be preserved, need to be highlighted, needs to be that, that has a story to tell. And, and we need to celebrate uh, women. We need to celebrate women. We need to tell us, tell the community what they do, what, how we, while we need each other. And so the, the title is Woman of Action because um, that idea of power, that idea of there's something really powerful about a woman. And in March months, we need, we need to highlight that. Not, it, it's not saying that men are not relevant, but why not dedicate it's one time. challenge? Yeah, it's, it's time. time. After centuries of you know, being set aside and, and not, not celebrated enough, you know, I think I'm so glad that Urban Sketches are doing our part and we are celebrating the incredible women in our lives. So sketch one, talk to her, capture her essence and likeness. Remember to hashtag USK Talks Challenge, tag Mario, tag me also, please, because I would love to see the women that you choose to celebrate. Um, here is a detail, the full sketch that Mario did for the challenge graphic. So who is Alexandra Baptiste? So Alexandra Batista is right. the, the admin chapter of Azores. Uh, island right. and I was there actually this this story is quite funny because I was sketching the the square and then she arrived and we met and we started sketching each other and I didn't want to put Alexander in the same scale of the square otherwise she she was being too little so I decided no I need to highlight her because I I met Alexandra only maybe once every two years because it's in the island. I don't go there so often, so I wanted to put her bigger in the sketchbook, and I think it was it was it was nice. I <laughs> love the way you've juxtaposed the the location with the drawing as well, so that you know all both are highlighted. That way. it's such a cool way to to tell the to tell the story of time and place in one in one sketch. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and we've got another example from you as well. Maybe you can tell us quickly what this is and where. Yeah, this is she, this woman is unbelievable. She's so amazing. She, this is from Ivory Coast in a really um, small village in the north, and she's cooking the um, mouse of the field. 
and it was our meal that day. <laughs> and, nice. Okay. Yeah, and 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 I was there to sketch her because she was doing something that I will never, never in my life was capable to to do, and she was doing it so elegant. So the pose, everything, it was like poetry, cooking something in in a poetry way. Wow, very beautiful and very inspiring. Also, a couple more examples from one of our from one of our team, USK Talks. This is from Federica, and she's capturing here her sister, who's a management engineer. Um, uh, the women in our team very rightly said that we don't want to highlight just women in the kitchen or doing housework and all that. Nothing, not putting that down in any way. I mean, we celebrate that, but also to show women of strength doing other things as well. So Federica shared a few examples. Uh, this is her sister and they're together. So, you, you know, it's great urban sketch showing the location and all that. This is in Rome and Fred Federica visited. And she's got one more where she drew a university professor on a commute. So this is the sketch, gives you an idea. Thank you for these examples, Federica. Okay, wow. And finally, of course, we have to thank our amazing guests today. Thank you to Charlotte uh, and Jedediah from Derwent. And of course, thank you so much, Mario, for doing all this incredible research and for sharing all this with, with us. I mean, it's, you've made a, an amazing episode. And um, yeah, we can't wait for your next one. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations as well for, for running the, and hosting the, the show. <laughs> it, it's my pleasure to sit here and gab with everybody who comes on. It is it's my pleasure. OK, Mario. We're coming up to one and a half hours. It's been a quite a show, so thank you so much. Cheers. I, I, I hope Yeah, see let's it. drink something. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mario. See you soon. Bye-bye. And for everyone else, again, we thank uh, Derwent for um, sponsoring that first segment. In the beginning, we have had some amazing guests. I hope you've all enjoyed it. We learned so much. I certainly learned so much. So before we leave, again, I encourage you to celebrate the woman in your life, whoever she may be. I know who mine is. I couldn't do what I'm doing without my amazing other half, who always insists on being in the background. She doesn't want to be on camera. But I couldn't do what I do. I could not be Rob Sketcherman without my amazing wife, Louisa. So today I am highlighting the missus. I'm going to draw her this week and tag her. And she's very embarrassed. She's watching now. But uh, again, you know, I know so many amazing women. I, and I love you all. Okay. Have an amazing week, everyone. Sketchers, I look forward to what you're going to post. Uh, stay safe. Be well. Um, Tag, make sure you tag and hashtag when you uh, post to everything, you know, hashtag USK Talks, USK Talks Challenge, um, tag the guests. If you're going to share work that you've done and you want them to take notice, be well, stay safe, keep sketching, and we'll see you as always next week with another episode of USK Talks. So 